Use and Zero, you might want to know what's the year end process. Well, you might be very surprised to learn that there isn't one. Especially if you're used to using software where you have to go through a rigorous year-end process, you'll be really glad to know that you don't have to do that in Xero. But don't take my word for it. Let's head into Xero and we'll take a look at a typical year-end example. But before we do, it would be great if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded on a regular basis. Your support is what encourages me to continue with the channel. Okay, let's head into Xero and take a look. Okay, I'm in my Xero company, and if I was to go to Accounting Advanced, and then Financial Settings, we would see that my year end date is the 30th of April. So that's great because we're now in the first week of May. So the year end has passed. So let's take a look at our profit and loss account for the year. So we would go to accounting. I've set up a new format. I would choose new profit and loss account. So here is our profit and loss account for the financial year that's just ended. So it's for the last financial year. It's our first year in business so we don't actually need a comparison. So here is our profit and loss account for the year. I'm actually very excited. We now have a compact view in Xero on the new reports. Previously this is what it would look like and it takes ages to scroll through. I'm just much happier looking at the compact view. So profit and loss account for the year. We don't need to study it but we can scroll down we're very efficient. We've finished our year, year end posting all our transactions. We've also worked out our corporation tax for the year. So we've got our profit after tax and retained earnings for the year of £2,758. If we were to look at the old style profit and loss account, so accounting, and I just have it here as profit and loss. This is what it looks like. So I've chosen compare periods, chosen to the month of April and 12 months. Again, I don't need a comparison because this is my first year in business. So happy housewares for the year. And it's going to be exactly the same. I've set up a section on this layout to show the corporation tax, a separate section. So now it still says net profit, but it's profit after tax. It's the same figure as we've looked at already, 2000 758. So what about our balance sheet? So accounting and I'm going to choose the new balance sheet which I've created. We want to look at the balance sheet at the end of last month or the end of the last financial year 30th of April and we don't need a comparison. Now again nothing exciting here but when we scroll down to the bottom of our balance sheet the capital and reserves section Here's the share capital in the business, and here we have our current year earnings, 2,758. Just to remind you, no surprise, that's exactly what we see on the profit and loss account. Then if we prefer to look at the old style balance sheet, I've just called it balance sheet here. Again, for the month of April, no need for a comparison. Scroll down to the bottom, to the equity section, share capital and current year earnings. Again, what we would expect, that's our figure. Okay, so we know the year end has passed. So what do these reports now look like after the year end? Is there something that we need to do? And I've already told you that there isn't. So let's look at the profit and loss account. This time I'm going to choose the current financial year and I'm going to compare it with last year. So last year's figure is what we've looked at already. Now there's no surprise, we're at the very start of the new year, so really there's nothing happened. In fact, there's only two transactions in my zero account. So for my next financial year, to the year April 2023, I only have two transactions, and that's what you'd expect. So our profit and loss account is back to zero for the current year. So two transactions that we've entered so far, and if we scroll down to the bottom, that's all that our retained earnings and it's two costs, so it's a loss are made up of at this stage. So 
Again, if you prefer to look at the old style profit and loss account, this time I've gone into the show date range. I've shown the range for the current financial year, May to April, and then compared it with the previous year. I've only put a full year so that we can see the comparison, the figures that we've already looked at. Again, it's the same as the new format, scrolling down to the bottom. So we have nothing in the current year apart from our two transactions with a net profit or loss of £520 in there we can see last year. So now let's look at what happens in the balance sheet. So I'm going to click into the month. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to choose the end of this month. And then I'm going to say, let me compare it with the month before and update. So just to recap, this is our balance sheet. We've chosen that the 31st of May, which is in the new year, and we're comparing it to the end of last year. So there's no surprise that very little's changed because we've already said we've only entered two transactions at zero at this stage. So you scroll down and you will actually see, if you're looking really carefully, you would see that the accounts payable figure has changed. But let's scroll down again to the bottom section, capital and reserves, and look what we have here. We've got share capital, which doesn't change. We've got our current year earnings, which is the loss, and I say loss, it's only a loss because we've only entered two expenses. We don't expect to incur a loss, but it's a loss at this stage of 520 compared to the 2,758 from the year before. And look what's happened. The current year earnings from last year are now automatically shown as retained earnings, prior year earnings in the current year. Of course, you're not going to be surprised that we're going to take a look at the old style balance sheet as well. So again, current balance sheet, May 2022, compared to the previous month. So again, let's scroll down to the bottom and we're seeing exactly the same thing. Share capital, as we would expect, and then the current year earnings from last year have automatically moved into the retained earnings in the current year. I'm going to do something else just to show you the fact that that is automatic. I'm going to go to my reports and I'm going to pick up one of my favourite reports, the account transactions report. I'm going to select the retained earnings code. I'm going to update and Zero has automatically chosen the range of this month. If I click into the date in May, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up the month of April and I'm going to update. And this is what I want to show you. So we've got the retained earnings account. There was no opening balance. And then look what happened at the year end date on the 30th of April. This was automatic. So zero says the source of end of period. Zero's added the description of the net profit and the 2,758 has been moved there automatically by zero. So that took me a bit of time to get to here, but I hope you appreciate by watching what I've shown you that there isn't a year end process in zero, that zero takes care of it for you automatically. I hope that you find the video useful. If you haven't done so already, remember to like and subscribe. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, happy zeroing.